All right, hello everybody. This is Aquas, and this is the Shooting Game Weekly 24, the true 24. I know last week no one no, no one mentioned it, but I had 24 um, on the title page for Ryan 4, but in fact it was 23. Um, so yeah, this week we are indeed doing uh, Ray Force, um, also known <laughs> also known as Gunlock in the Europe uh, layer section uh, on the Saturn and Windows ports for all regions. And Galactic Attack for the USA and European ports. So it's got a lot of names, but the main one is Ray Force for the Japanese arcade version. Um, one of the titles kind of like, uh, I don't know, you, I don't know if I want to say claim to fame or, or something like that as far as like shoot 'em ups go, but it's one of these games that uh, has a really awesome presentation and it just. Uh, it, it kind of stands out as somewhat of a classic uh, around the era that it was released, which is about 1993, uh, around 1994, that, that, that time. And uh, so, yeah, this week I'm going to be having uh, Icarus with us. So, hi, Icarus. Hey, how's it going? Going, <laughs> going pretty good. And uh, he's going to be talking about his uh, one credit clear here. Um, that's what, we, what's, what we're going to be looking at is a one credit clear uh, for this game. Uh, are you going to do much scoring in the run? Uh, yeah, I do quite a bit of scoring because this run was recorded for the shooting game um, tournament for Shmups Forum in hey. 2008, so I pretty much went quite hard at it. When I was oh, playing. cool. That's what this is from. Okay, because that's, cause that's when I played it as well for pretty much the first time, and um, I remember, you know, I did I did, you know, I tried fairly hard, like, why don't you try hard from Dompaki? I can't get that out of my head lately, but <laughs> <laughs> but I got to stage, I think I, I, think I got to stage 6 Maybe it was the end of stage five or something, but it gets like mad difficult, especially some of the bosses uh, later in the game. So it's gonna be cool to see how you deal with that. And scoring is not exactly easy either, because uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, it's not really that easy. The system is quite simple because um, the scoring is based on the lock-ons that you have, and you have a maximum of eight. But the multipliers they give you are a little bit strange. Um, you get base value for the first one, uh, which is usually about 100 points for most enemies. And then the multipliers go up in pretty small steps up until about the seventh lock-on, where you get quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I think the steps are, um, for the second lock-on, you get double. Uh, for the third one, you get times four. For mm -hmm. the fourth one, times eight. Fifth one, times 16. Uh, sixth one, times 32. And then it goes up to times 128 for the seventh one and times 256 for the eighth one. Yeah. So scoring pretty much is based on trying to maintain eight lock-ons as best as you can throughout the entire game and using all of them up in one sequence of uh, lock-on attacks. Right, yeah. and like, you know, the enemies will arrange themselves in the background in, in, such, a, in such a way that you kind of want to let them like kind of fall into your like lock-on reticle. Yeah, so, most yeah. of the time you do want to try and get them, you know, locked on. But there is a, uh, like I said, you do get base value for most of them multiplied. And some enemies actually have a higher base value than, say, 50 or 100 points. I see. And you'll probably see in the replay that I um, t try and get lock-ons on big enemies as the 7th or the 8th lock-on. Oh, and get... gotcha. That's kind of the trick, isn't yeah. it? So yeah. most of my routes do look kind of normal in some places, and then you you see me take some really strange routes through the game, trying to get maximum score from certain lock-on groups. Um, and I'll try and point some of them out to you. Um, in terms of the scoring, though, you, most of the time you'll be getting, I think it's 25,600 points for the eighth lock-on for most enemies, but you mm. do see 32,000 points for some, 38,400 for some, and there is one instance where you get 99,900, and that's in stage two. Um, and I'll point that out as well in the replay. Oh, that's the big cat. That's that's like the biggest cash in. Yeah, right there. <laughs> that is pretty much the biggest cash in. But you cool. also there's a secondary scoring part as well, where once you max out on uh, your power ups, you get um, an incremental uh, for each uh, excessive uh, power up that you pick up, uh, going up to ten thousand points for uh, each one. And uh, basically, oh. you want to try and stay maxed out as best as you can. Okay, so um, yeah, so we've been already been, men been mentioning this uh, lock-on mechanics. I mean, it's pretty uh, yeah basic game in terms of the mechanics. Uh, you have a shot, and then yeah, enemies in the background can be um, instead of the foreground. Well, sometimes enemies in the foreground too can be locked on, but 
Yeah, you yeah. Use, a, use a lock on and, and you can lock on up to eight, eight of your lasers. Um, yep. and I guess like you kind of like hover over like big enemies to uh, queue up uh, a lock on. Isn't that right? And then you can send like all your lasers at once. Yeah, that's for, correct. Like, um, bigger damage. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's called uh, empty lock ons, where basically you lock on to either a bit of scenery or a more resilient enemy to boost up your multiplier. And then you lock on to um, more destroyable targets for your seventh to eighth lock on to try and maximize scope. But I mean, other than that, I mean, there really isn't that there really isn't that much else to say. I mean, the game's got a pretty big hitbox. Um, yeah, as it, far as the ship goes, uh, you really got to be careful during some of the boss patterns. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That hitbox is quite big because the game was from 1993, and basically you've got no room for error in this game. There's no bomb, of course, so you right. can't defend yourself. You've basically got to be on your toes at all times. Right, no bomb indeed, indeed. Uh, but, uh, yeah, how many stages are there then? I believe there are seven. Okay, okay, cool. But uh, yeah, it should go. It should be a uh, kind of a shorter episode, but uh, should be fun and cool nonetheless to yeah. check out. Um, anything else we want to mention before we get into the replay, or should we just get right into it now? Uh, I think we'll probably get straight into the replay. In terms okay. of the story, though, it is the second one in the oh, series. Right. We yeah. Might ask you about the, some of the story stuff if you yeah. want to brush um, up on that. Well, in the original story, which began with Ray Crisis, uh, basically con human. Uh, uh, an AI is built to govern the Earth's atmosphere and, you know, maintain human, um, you know, uh, things. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it goes sent uh, sentient after some kind of hacking goes on, and it starts mm -hmm. to kill everybody. Basically, um, in Ray Crisis, you uh, you play a hacker and you have to go in and try and shut down the system, but it you fail for whatever reason, and basically Ray uh, Ray Force takes place many years after that when. 99.8% of human existence has almost been wiped out. Mm, wow. um, and this is basically the last stand. You've got to go in and blow up a uh, con human. <laughs> just, yeah, <laughs> just, that's what you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I mean, so uh, where does, uh, um, is that is that the only two games in the series? Or uh, isn't there? Ray Storm. Um, Ray Storm. Um, yep. Ray, Ray Storm isn't really part of the storyline. Um, oh, no, it isn't. I see. Okay. It's more of a kind of a non-canon story where basically humans go off and colonize Cecilia, but then they start war and you have to go and stop them. I see. So, okay, yeah. that's why we only pretty much concern ourselves with this one and then Ray Crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. That sounds good then. Um, all right, I guess we're going to go ahead and get on with this replay then. Mm -hmm. um, I shall do a countdown. So it'll be a uh, three, two, one click will be how we do that. Okay. And we'll be good to go. So here we go. Three, two, one click. Wait a moment. <laughs> <laughs> countdown. <laughs> Okay. Well, at the very beginning, you'll see a example of me trying to um, maximize my scoring by picking up two of these big ships in one lock-on sequence, right there, where you see I destroyed the first uh, small enemy. Yeah. Now I can lock on to um, those two big ships as part of the big sequence. And once again, because their base point value is higher than smaller ships, that's what, that's why you want to do that. Yeah, you want to do that as often as you can. It's not always intuitive to do it because there are certain parts which are made a lot harder to it when you try and do it. Yeah. But nine times out of ten, there are ways that you can do it. So it's just um, trying to find a good pattern through it. Might as well try to go for it. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. here as well, I try and uh, lock onto one of the asteroids as the last one. Why is an asteroid worth more points than like a tank? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> What's in those things? <laughs> I think one thing that should be mentioned though, which I didn't before, was that the uh, lock-ons have a timer duration and they'll actually phase out if you don't shoot um, a lock-on uh, after oh, you've locked right. on something. So you've got to basically keep shooting as much as you can. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes you get kind of carried away trying to lock on to everything, and then, 
Like either yeah. the lock on goes off of the screen or the lock ons run out and you're like, um, all right. <laughs> yeah, you, you do have to be pretty quick at this because you can miss your window of opportunity. Definitely. Um, how uh, lenient is it like if an enemy like flies off the screen and you and you have them locked on? Like, will it get them when they're off the screen or? In some cases, it does get them when they're still off screen. Um, yeah. But you have like about one, maybe two seconds chance before you lose that um, lock okay. on. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so you still have a bit of leeway that way. This boss is pretty easy though. Yeah. Yeah. Bosses are uh, pretty cool because they normally have like yeah parts to blow off and yeah, kind of different uh, segments and they're pretty interesting in general. Yeah, um, and with the first boss, all you're doing is basically trying to blow off all of its bits with your shot, and then you kill it afterwards. It's a pretty quick boss to deal with though. But yeah, it's like the hitbox is so big. It's just like you're just going where you like need to go. I mean, there's yeah. nothing really. <laughs> yeah, you you don't have a small hitbox like you do in more modern games. You've basically got to macro dodge everything you can. It's stage... just, it's the whole ship. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> stage fun. two is a pretty um, pretty easy place to uh, die the first time because there's so much going on at this point. Like, especially when you're trying to lock onto these um, carries at the back. The um, bottommost one is actually worth more than the rest of them, so you're trying to get the. The bottom most ones is your seventh or eighth. Oh wow, that's a, that's a really good tip. <laughs> Just here as well is where you get the 99,000 point one. Um, okay. You saw I destroyed that turret on the left side. You can lock onto the platform afterwards and use that as a destroyable target, and that's actually worth 99,900 if you uh, if you get it quickly enough. So get the pla get the platform as the last yeah. lock on. That's the key there. Okay. Because the platform is like worth a lot. Like. They had to spend yeah. a lot of money to make that. Yeah, definitely. Well, they, they got the uh, computer or whatever. <laughs> uh, if you're scoring well enough, though, you should be able to hit the first extend in this stage, which is at a million points. Oh, sweet. Uh, the second one's at two million, and you usually get that at around stage four. Two million, okay. Stage four, yeah. gotcha. And that's pretty much if you're doing, like, kind of normal scoring or efficient scoring or I think it's kind efficient of... scoring yeah okay yeah. efficient scoring otherwise you probably you might get it like maybe in stage six or something yeah I think if you're just scoring you know quick and easy then you'll probably get it closer to stage five and uh, beginning of stage six where you get the second one right. hmm. yeah, just quickly destroying all the carrier parts here I was never quite sure how to kill this guy, but it just looks like you're just killing him. <laughs> yeah, it's just speed, but at this point you can see he starts to launch these uh, missile carrying fighters. Mm -hmm. You can use the, the ship as uh, lock-on boosters to uh, multiply the value you get from those uh, missiles and ships. Oh, that's, oh, okay. That's a good one. That's a good tip for sure. Yeah. It never really yeah. occurred to me to do that. <laughs> There's a lot of places you can do that, definitely. Okay, yeah, yeah, because they just, you can do that empty lock, right, and queue up the, queue them up so that your last um, lock-ons are those last ones. Oh, man, cool. Yep, yeah, definitely. Uh, the second boss, you can do the same thing as well by queuing up using parts of uh, the boss's um, um, body to uh, boost up your lock multiplier. This guy's in the background, like it's funny because your your uh, your lock on takes so long to get down there that you really have to focus on one to actually destroy them. <laughs> yeah, they're not really worth that much anyway, so I don't really see what's the point. <laughs> yeah, just here as well. If you use the two front launchers on the boss, you can uh, queue up some empty locks to uh, boost the value of these um, fighters. Oh, okay, great. A little bit of boss milking, I guess. <laughs> and you can actually do this for about three or four cycles, but I think I do it for about two cycles in this, just because it gets kind of annoying after a while. I see. Cool. And then just destroy the boss as quickly as possible now. Still has some pretty nasty patterns though once it phases back in because those homing lasers can trap you if you don't uh, damage it quickly enough. Right. Yeah, there's the uh, yeah the Taito um, brand laser. 
Yeah. If you, ever, if you ever hear people referring to like Taito lasers, like those are the ones. Yeah. <laughs> There's quite a lot of these kind of homing lasers in the game. Like, and these ones are probably the coolest ones because they're semi homing. Yeah. <laughs> I know you see it. You see that those lasers a lot in uh, like Darius Gaiden. Yeah, type da of games. <laughs> Darius games have them a lot. Stage <laughs> three. <laughs> Darius was uh, yeah, also Taito. So yeah. I guess yeah. it's more. I guess it's more like uh, yeah, it's Taito lasers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the atmosphere enter. That's like one of the cool little parts. And yeah, like the graphic design in this game is really good. Like for 1993, I think it's probably one of the best um, visual games that you can get. Definitely timeless, I think. Yeah, especially probably one of those games. Yeah, that when it came out, you know, it was probably really like it was probably like hot in the arcade for a while. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people really enjoyed the game. Like, and it, it's quite successful. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made two sequels. Right, right. <laughs> so this was the first one in the like gray this, thing yeah. stuff. This okay. Was, yeah, this was the first one released, but it's the second one in the story. Gotcha. Yeah, you can tell they're really concerned with like kind of the perspective in the game with like the with the homing lasers, but more yeah. so even with the backgrounds and and how like enemies are killed in the background. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Oh, whoa. <laughs> What happened? <laughs> that was a joypad failure, if I remember correctly. <laughs> oh, for real? Oh, man. My joypad started going <laughs> at that point, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs> System error, okay. The stage is actually quite tricky because, as you can see, there's quite a lot of really complex chaining sequences in this one. Especially with this floating island, if you destroy the link as the eighth one, you get 32,000 um, points for it. And there's two of them, so it's worth a fair bit. Right there, yeah. This uh, section here can be quite tricky as well because if you don't destroy all those tanks quickly, the screen does get quite flooded. Yeah, and those little like turrets there are pretty annoying. Yeah, I those... usually get. When I was practicing, I got killed there quite often, like so. Yeah, that's definitely a place to, to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stage two boss. Right. Moving this right one, along. yep, this one's pretty straightforward. The uh, glowing orb that hangs underneath it is the target, but uh, you can actually destroy some of its turrets, and you pretty much want to. Uh, the turrets on the wings, uh, one of the patterns shoots out a uh, right angle of lasers, which can basically trap you and uh, restrict your movements. So you want to try and keep at least one side destroyed before it does it. Right here. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. At least, yeah, at least one side. Okay, cool. Otherwise, it's just making sure you do as much damage as you can to that uh, glowing target. Yeah, I like that little kind of thruster laser he does there. It looks cool. <laughs> the <penis. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fissure of consciousness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, someone mentioned... Uh, you know, that was a similar boss like in Kamui, and yeah, so I mean, if you guys remember the Tales of Eltonix episode, of course, I mean, we mentioned, uh, yeah. you know, this game was basically a huge inspiration for many of the um, Tales game, the Tales of El Eltonix games. Yeah, I think this game was inspiration for quite a lot of games, not just the, the Eltonix games, but games like Sakaya Garentai as well. Okay, sweet. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, visual similarities, and even the system is quite similar in Suki. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, I love how those those big yellow guys. Just, they, yeah, it's just really cool how like the background guys will c come into the foreground. Sometimes, yeah. like they really like, they show it off. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of bullets. Wow, you actually yes. did some straight up hurting there. Yep, stage four is probably where the difficulty gets very high, not just with all the bullets, but also with the lock chaining as well. These guys are pretty easy. You can use these mechs as part of an empty lock. Uh, they're not worth anything though. And these turrets as well. Uh, you can see I do it here. Right, the multiple. Okay, yeah, yeah, there you go. Ooh. Yeah. Cool. This screen does get filled with bullets on this stage, like, so you have to be very, very careful. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I know when I was learning this, I sometimes I wasn't sure like what is it, what was the right order to lock on to guys. So it's like you kind of gotta do some experimentation to figure it out. Um, there's pretty much not really a right order in a way. Um, as long as you remember to lock on to high value enemies at the end, you'll always get a pretty good score from it anyway. Okay, okay. fair enough. Another empty lock. Uh, yep. Tower there. Yep. Yeah, they really want you to use that, huh? Yeah, they do. Little technique. There's a lot of different uh, ways you can uh, exploit that in, in the game. Yeah, it never occurred to me, but it's obvious now that I see that you should do that. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I was probably just playing it for survival back then. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yet, I was, yet I didn't make it far enough. Mm. It's a pretty tough game to play for survival like because you really do need those extra lives. I see. Kind of laid into those guys. This yeah. boss is pretty cool and difficult. <laughs> and this at first. boss, yeah, the, um, the boss is pretty difficult at first, but you can actually kill it quickly by destroying the both uh, legs on both sides uh, on, on one side. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, which is what I'm doing here. Okay. But there's also a little scoring trick as well. Um, if you look in the background, you can see the triangular uh, buildings that are in the middle. If you get the boss to drop on top of one of them when it dies like that. Really? You get 100,000 points for it as well. So it's a little bonus point, but it's very hard to do. So you didn't it, do that there? No. You, oh, okay. you have to yeah, basically that... let it roll for about five Whoa. or six cycles that's and a really, then drop it. That's a really obscure uh, scoring trick. <laughs> it is, definitely. And it's also very difficult to do, which is why I didn't practice it for uh, this one. Yeah, I mean, in the back, I, I think I saw one of those buildings, but I didn't like look like lit up or anything, you know? Uh, not, it's not really obvious how you do it. Um, I think some yeah. people found it out by accident, and then it's right. uh, documented on replays and guides and stuff. But uh, it's a pretty weird trick to see. He died again. Yeah, that was definitely me this time. Yeah. <laughs> the stage is quite hard as well. It's like no, it was another. It was another joypad death. <laughs> like every, they're all joypad deaths. <laughs> <laughs> That was definitely me. Uh, okay. I had nowhere to run on that one. Yeah, you just, you just, yeah. Okay. This one, this stage has quite a lot of background enemies, so you can basically go for quite a lot of uh, uh, lock chaining in this one. But it's pretty tricky because they move around quite a lot. And there's, some of them are pretty fast as well. You can see these little ships that come in from the background here. If you leave them to come to the foreground, they fire these really nasty patterns at you. Yeah, a lot of those guys you want to take out before they actually get to the foreground. Yeah, definitely. And the, I mean, yeah, the, the, the lock-on attack does just a lot of damage. It does. So uh, it's it, like, you want to do that. <laughs> uh, lock-on does do a lot of damage, and it's also quite useful if you can do a lot of damage with it on bosses as well, especially with the boss right. coming. Okay. Because the shot doesn't do uh, that much damage initially, so you basically need some way of boosting your damage. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, you kill, yeah, you kill, you kill most of those guys in the lockout, and only two of them came. But if like five of them came, like they would have flooded the screen probably. Yeah, that, so that they, kind of like pretty much spread, like scatter spread shot. Yeah, <laughs> which really had no up. like order to it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And this boss is a nasty boss. Um, Basically, you have to target the head to kill it quickly, but the sh like I said before, the uh, shot doesn't do that much damage. Mm. So you have to try and force it into the background by destroying one of its um, shoulder parts. So you can see here, destroyed shoulder part, and then you can start locking onto its head. I see. That's the only way you can boost your damage from it. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Ooh, nice. wow. <laughs> oh, nice. That's yeah, that's it. That's a pretty difficult um, movement sequence to do. I had to practice that quite a lot to get it right. Ah, uh, yeah. That was pretty slick, but effective. <laughs> Looks like you're barely in there with how, with how big these hitboxes are. <laughs> yeah, um, you have to position yourself quite carefully, otherwise you do get caught. Um, and I have been caught quite a lot during practice on that one. So stage fi five now? Yeah, stage six. Sa oh, six, okay. This one's pretty long though, but this one does uh, is quite tight. There's a lot of uh, very difficult patterns to get through, especially with these small drones because they come on the screen, they shoot like a bunch of bullets, and then they try and charge you as well. So you basically have to move around very quickly. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're pretty annoying, huh? <laughs> yeah, they're aggressive, these ones. They're Not like cool. Raiden, where they come down, and then they like float there for yeah. like 20 seconds, and then they just fly away. <laughs> yeah, these ones are nasty, because they try and shoot you, then they try and ram into you. Yeah, they just come at you. Yeah. The ones in stage 4 are somewhat similar, but they try and fly away after they shoot you, which is even more annoying, because you can't shoot them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just being jerks. Yeah. <laughs> just AI, right? I mean, they, you know, they don't care about being jerks. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> this big tank mid-boss coming up is pretty difficult to do as well, but if you can kill it um, as part of a lock-on chain, you do get quite a lot for it, I believe. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I don't actually do it in this, but I think you can get at least 250,000 from it. I as if lock on, so it's worth it a lot. But um, if you try and do that, then obviously the screen's gonna be full of all of these enemies shooting at you. Yeah, that was a lot of stuff, just like right at that clutch moment there. <laughs> yeah, so I just basically thought, get rid of it as quickly as possible. All right. And even this bit is quite difficult because these things fire these really fast lasers. Right, yeah, and you're just kind of like making sure they're all kind of dying before they yeah. crit before they crisscross you or yeah, trap you, you to, even. You have to be aggressive to get rid of all them because if you leave even a few of them on screen, more will just come and trap you. I see. So it kind of went down an elevator shaft there. Yep. It's kind of hard these, to tell, but. These things I hate because wow. they're aggressive. Ooh, Ooh. man, wow. Yeah, they're aggressive. <laughs> That's just, ooh. <laughs> this is a pretty fun part of the stage. Um, these barriers will obviously block you, but you can uh, get rid of them to give you some space. You can see I'm taking a very specific sequence through them because, um, as you can see, the column actually pops back up after it's dropped. Uh, oh, so, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and if you just if you do that too early, then obviously it'll come up and it, you might have a chance of running into it. So I basically try and drop it just as it's going off the bottom of the screen. Man, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> <Get hit by. laughs> it's like, what it got me? Oh, oh. Yeah, it has happened before. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I guess it's got to happen at least once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the arcade kind of ruthlessness there. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty nasty game, this, definitely. Stage 6 boss. Yep. This boss is pretty straightforward, though. All you need to do is target the core to destroy it, but um, probably the best thing to do first is to destroy the center um, turret and one of the sides, just to give you some space. Okay. You barely dodge that, that stuff, it's pretty cool. Mm. You gotta make lot, sure. Yeah, there's a lot of bullet hurting in this box. And then just hit it as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. More homing lasers. That worked well. <laughs> uh, that's that one done. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Mm, last stage. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it, actually. Uh, the first part is pretty fast-paced. Yeah. Releasing infinitely. Yeah, I don't know what the, who thought of these titles. Yet, but, uh... <laughs> wow, that's funny. Strange titles. You can't really get many lock-ons on this one, so it's just a wow. case of just destroying everything as quickly as you can. Jeez, that's, that's a slick dodge. And the first mid-boss is quite easy to do. Oh, man. Is that spot, like, the only good spot? Yeah, that's the only good spot for the first pattern. Oh, man. <laughs> Otherwise, like, will you survive it, or...? No. <laughs> not at all? I think the bullets are pretty much randomly fired at that point, so, um... That's the only safe spot there because it fires in a kind of fixed pattern, but the bullets go all over the place, so there's no real easy way of dodging it besides sitting right there. Wow. 
this bit That's is really quite tricky. tricky. So, yeah. Something it's, like you, it would be really annoying to figure out, like if you were playing. Yeah. You know, just kind of an I think, arcade, I guess. Yeah, I think it's primarily trial and error at that point. Yeah. <laughs> This wow. the, this part of the stage is quite fast as well, but if you haven't really, you can't really see it on the replay that well. But there are um, ships in the background, very small ships as part of Con Human's fleet. You can actually use them as lock-on uh, targets for scoring. They're very but, um, yeah. Yeah, but you have to be very quick, as you can see, because in the foreground there's quite a lot going on. Yeah, you just <laughs> indeed. Looks like you guys some... Wow. Oh dang. <laughs> yeah, the flex of dodging at that point. That was a pretty cool part to watch. <laughs> Heading up tower as well. This bit is fairly simple. You can lock onto these small fighters as they appear and uh, shoot the big one down. Um, you need to shoot the big one down quickly though because that fight shot pattern can be uh, trapping, especially oh, wow. the screen. Okay. Yeah. And the last part is pretty simple. You're just destroying the lock-on targets on the... Um, tower for power-ups. It's a pretty good way of boosting score. Um, by this point, I haven't actually got maximum uh, value for everything yet, but I get about 500,000, I think, for the entire sequence. But if you're maxed out, you can get about seven, 800,000 for it as well. Oh, okay, got you. Okay, got you. Yeah, you really are getting a lot of yeah. extra little score thingies here. Yeah. Man, they really just give it to you. <laughs> so getting to that part is definitely key in a scoring run. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Cool. Oh man, last boss already. Yep, last boss. I think I do speed kill tactics here. Cool. Um, first part is just destroying the core at the bottom, which you can see me locking onto. Do it quickly enough. And oh yeah, he's like ejecting form. it. Yep. Second form is pretty easy as well. If you destroy two of the arms, which generate the black hole, you can basically phase it into its third form. This laser is quite nasty. Wow. Yeah. yeah, there are only two safe spots and the movement pattern is fixed, so you basically dodge left corner and then dodge right corner. So do you have to be like kind of like weaving like that to bait, to bait the, those lasers or are, no, you just kinda, are you just trying to get to that spot? Just trying to get to the spot because okay. like, the pattern is fixed, so basically yeah. oh, okay. you sit in the left corner and then sit in the right corner and you've dodged it, no problem. Okay. And this is the last form as well, so basically again it's speed kill tactics, but you're trapped in this. Um, circle of uh, tiles as you can see. Oh, you're like shooting them like an arcanoid or something. Yeah, you can shoot and you can <laughs> you can actually escape oh, that pattern, man. but I didn't actually manage to get in this one. But luckily I managed to do enough damage to kill the boss. Nice. Down. Ooh, good run, man. Even though it was like a while ago. <laughs> yeah, long time Still. ago. That was solid. And the deaths were exciting, so. Yeah, well, uh, I was pretty much guaranteed to die at some point in those stages anyway, so I was just happy that I actually got the run out of the way at the end. Because <laughs> mm. I um, think... Mm. Oh man, this ending. Yeah. The ultimate lock. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Goodbye, Earth. What, Earth? Oh, no, Earth. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Why did they blow it up? What? Uh, <laughs> I guess they had colonized or something, right? Well, at that point in the story, um, Con Human had basically taken over the Earth. He had basically wiped out all the humans on the planet. And right. he started to remake Earth in Con Human's image, which is basically the same image as uh, this clone human that uh, um, synced himself with uh, Con Human. Uh, basically, the entire inside of Earth is hollow and one giant colony weapon, basically. And you can't really take it back over and recolonize it because it's not a planet anymore, so the last thing you can do is blow it up. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> There's no kill like overkill. Too far but... gone at that point, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even, yeah, Soda came in on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's probably why they made a storm um, slightly different in that regard. <laughs> Where basically you're just going over to take over Cecilia and recolonize it rather than blow the place up like you did here. <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, even though you blew up Earth, like, sounds like, uh, 
you know, some, a peaceful time is ahead for this world. <laughs> yeah, well, I said in the story, not all humans are dead. They're living on colonies. So there is some humanity still out there. It's just they can't live on Earth anymore. That's the only problem. Wait, that melody at the very end was like, what was that? It was a popular song. <laughs> yeah. What the hell was that? I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the soundtrack is one of the coolest things, too, because, uh, yeah, Zuntada, of course, is uh, Taito's in-house band. Oh, so you got 5.6 million? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Zuntada, um, yeah, Taito's in-house band. They do some really cool music, and they even do, like, live, you know, live albums and stuff with, like, their music from Ray Force and... Yeah, they do. They, there's quite a lot of remix albums available from Zuntada, so it is definitely worth checking some of them out if you like the music from Rayforce. Yeah, I, I would say it's very popular in like uh, shooting game, like stuff in general. Like ever, yeah. like a lot of people like the Rayforce music, and there's a lot yeah. of kind of uh, you know references to it. I mean, obviously we got yeah, Tales of Eltonix. Yeah. Just all those games I really liked it, and mm -hmm. it seems kind of like the evolution of uh, you know the whole shot and you know missile thing because i mean that was i mean that 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 uh you know the like ground missile stuff like really just got com almost completely phased out it seems yeah uh, in shmups at a certain point um, yeah the, basically i think the um inspiration was obviously from Zevius and right, all yeah. the games like that but they basically changed it to lock on lasers and i right. think it's a really good system to have but you don't see many companies making games like that now uh, i mentioned sukai Garantai obviously did it you've got kamui that does it as well and um, crimson clover does it as well mm -hmm. but outside of those ones there aren't that many games that you use this kind of weapon system and i think it might be pretty good to see again in the near future if uh, another company does pick up something like that it's a really cool concept because it's like, I mean, you have your air shot and then you have a different button for the ground shot. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like, it's a, there's something like so simple about that, which is probably why it, got, it became popular from Xevious. I mean, yeah. um, one of my favorite games that I mentioned on pretty much every episode is Dragon Spirit. And uh, that was kind of an evolution of uh, Xevious and very, it's actually released very closely to Xevious. Yeah. Like, a, I don't know, maybe a few years, maybe a few years later, but mm -hmm. um they, I feel like that game really defined like the whole ground, ground and air, um, target to target type of gameplay. But yeah, you see the evolution with the lasers and stuff, and in yeah. Ray Force, and they kind of make a scoring, like a kind of little scoring system out of it, which works pretty well. Kind of yeah. nice, nice little balance there. Mm -hmm, definitely, and like I said, I think uh, if a company does pick it up and make it, I hope they make it as good as you know the games that we've mentioned because uh, it's a really good system. It looks very simple uh, when you first see it, or first try it, but there's a lot of depth to it as well, definitely, especially with Rayforce, for example, where you've got all the different lock-on sequences that you can do, mm -hmm. and games like you know Crimson Clover where you have to you know know where to lock on first and then use your break, uh, uh, break mode, for example, to maximize scoring. There's a lot of depth involved in them. Definitely. Yeah, and uh, I guess it is fitting too because uh, the Tales of Eltonix games, um, the localizations from New, New Media were actually uh, released, I think, yesterday or a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, those games are out now. Um, so, yeah, the episode we did on that was to hype this up. So it, it's fitting because, yeah, we did Ray Force, which was the inspiration. Um, it just kind of worked out that way. I didn't actually play in that, like, in mind. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> just a reminder yeah get those games if uh yeah you're definitely if you're interested and i, I think yeah they're they're at a pretty good price point and stuff and uh, they're all pretty good they're all pretty good games so yeah definitely i definitely think people should pick them up because they're really well made and you know they're worth playing definitely definitely mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh yeah i mean uh <clears throat> so how does this <clears throat> how does this game like kind of rank in your favorite shmups like do you just like it, like kind of for what it is? Like you just know, you just kind of recognize it as a really good game, or like I don't know. Like, um, what's your kind of final, like final uh, thoughts or review on it? I guess is. I mean, I've always yeah. liked this game, to be honest. Um, I used to have it on the Saturn, um, and I used to play it on off uh, just for a bit of fun. Um, it was right. only after the shooting game tournament came around that I actually decided to sit down and learn it properly, and um, yeah. I've, I've developed quite a good appreciation for it because. I, Obviously, I really like the um, visual style and the music, but the gameplay mm. is really deep as well. Mm. And as you start to understand the game more, you can start to appreciate 
just how well balanced the game is and you know how well designed the stages are in that regard and I really like it um, it's probably one of my top 20 at least um, and I've played quite a lot uh, yeah. over the years but this one probably is one of the best <laughs> definitely oh cool cool glad to hear um, of course uh, when you want to see a game you usually like the game right <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> or, or to of some course. extent unless you're I guess you're playing in a tournament setting sometimes people don't like the game and they play yeah score anyway <laughs> well in tournament settings people do play the game and you know they tend to hate the game afterward but i was lucky <laughs> because i actually liked this game to begin with and i wanted to learn it at uh anyway so i just yeah. thought i'd play it mm. indeed <clears throat> cool um well uh i guess i don't have much else to say um you know there are uh of course the other like ray games in the in the series uh there's like the hd uh was it rake ray, ray storm, storm. HD yeah. that's uh, available on like Xbox and yeah, kind of similar, pretty much similar gameplay. Um, I haven't really played the HD one that much. Have you? Um, the, H the HD one is slightly different to the the arcade and PS one versions because it's in widescreen format. So yeah. you know, there's slightly more space to move around in. But it's a pretty good game to pick up if you haven't played any of the Ray games yet because it's still really well made. Yeah. So I mean, if you don't want to like. You know, dink around with Mame or whatever for Rayforce or uh, the port, I guess, for Saturn. Uh, I guess, yeah, it's on Saturn and like Windows. And yeah. I don't know about it, like win uh, the Windows thing. Uh, the Windows version probably I wouldn't recommend because yeah. um, it, it, it doesn't run at the correct frame rate. So it's like uh, double speed on most computers at the oh, moment. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So it's Maybe not very not good. One. Yeah. Um, I th I'm not sure if it was on the title um legends pack I oh yeah think it, i think it, it is but on, maybe only the uh like japanese ones or something like that yeah i think it was so probably that might be one to uh recommend as well for yeah, it's one of the uh like taito uh, memories or taito collection um take a look it might be on there i know at least uh at least like some of the, one of the ray games are on there but those are pretty good collections also in general for taito games yeah definitely so. Check that out. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, I don't have. I don't know. I don't have much else to say. Uh, any like any last things you want to add? Maybe I'll take a look in the chat. See if there's anything worth mentioning here. But otherwise, we'll be wrapping it up for. Uh, this no. Episode. All I want to say is go play Rayforce. It's good. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! That was that was pretty awesome to see that replay. I must say, and seeing the last stage, I'd never seen it before. So. It's pretty cool, and the music got kind of like scary at the last stage and everything. So <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. <laughs> Good presentation. Mm. All right, well I think uh, yeah I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, it's on Title Legends two. Oh, it is on Title Legends two. Just oh. it straight up. I th mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. Mm. Well, All that right. might be worth uh, advising then, definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely, and like. Yeah, uh, Darius Gaiden is on there, and some uh, some uh, classics like uh, Growl. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Growl, uh, like the crazy one of the craziest beat 'em ups. Um, uh, you just have to play it to kind of know what I'm talking about. But that's gonna do it for SCG Weekly 24. It was awesome. Thank you, Icarus, for coming on and talking about this with your replay and everything. Uh, thank you for having me on. Yep, it was uh, quite wonderful, and. Um, <laughs> What's uh? What are we doing next week? Oh yeah, so I think uh, gonna be doing checking out uh Ginga Force actually next week with uh Pestro, uh, I think is what eighty seven or eighty six or uh, whatever the number is, but uh he actually has the world record in uh, that game, which is really cool. Uh, and we're gonna be checking out some of his uh, world record replays, so that should be really awesome for Ginga Force. Ginga Force, I think it's gonna be next week. Um, also got some kind of interesting things planned for um SC Weekly in general still coming up. Uh, so yeah, oh, that's guess. That's all we're going to pretty much it. So, yeah, Soda, go ahead and uh, cut it. And I think we're done. So thanks all for watching and see you later. <laughs>